Hey, good morning, everyone. We're really glad you're here with us at Grace Church of Northwest Arkansas. Whether you're here in Northwest Arkansas or whether you're joining us from somewhere else, welcome. Thank you for being with us this morning. Just a couple announcements as we get started today. Um, next week, the first service of 2021, we are going to have a guest teacher with us. And I couldn't be more excited about this. Her name is Marlena Graves, and she wrote a book which really influenced me this past year called The Way Up is Down. And it didn't just do a lot for me because Christianity Today gave it their top award for spiritual formation books of the year. And we're super excited and incredibly blessed that she would join us. So she's going to be with us next Sunday. So make sure that you're, uh, you're ready for the, the service on Sunday. Share it with your friends. It's really going to be awesome. And that's going to kick off our study, our deep dive into Isaiah, which we're starting in the first of the next year. Um, that's going to be the book that's going to carry us through to the summer. We're going to look at all kinds of aspects for it. And if you've never really studied Isaiah, Isaiah, many people say, is the proto-gospel. It is formed so much of the New Testament theology and thinking that we see written, carried through the life and ministry of Jesus. It's the most quoted book other than the Psalms in the New Testament. And so it's essential that we have a really solid understanding of Isaiah, and that starts next week. Um, I also want to say thank you. At, at the end of this year, um, obviously all of us have been through tremendous disruptions and um, challenges going through. I want to. I just want to say thanks to everyone who makes Grace Church possible. All the all of you show up. All of you who give, but especially Stacy and Roland who do the tech, uh, the teaching team that has been so faithful throughout all the different changes and moves. The incredible worship team that has just been so good and so consistent. Uh, everyone who serves on the Catalyst team. Uh, making decisions without a lot of information, without a lot of ways of doing it, but still staying true to the task. Um, Al, uh, Teresa and Jay, who work on the finances, working on that. Just, just everybody who has stuck together through this year. Thank you. We made it. We made it through 2020. Now, looking forward to 2021, there's a lot out there. We're going to talk a little bit more about that, but I want to say a special thing as far as giving goes. Many people wait until the last week of the year to give. We understand this. This, this is what happens. Oftentimes with most ministries, churches, nonprofits, up to 30, 40% of their entire annual budget comes from money that's given in December. And most of the money given in December is given in the last week, which is where we are. So if you're considering your year in giving, as you do that, please remember Grace Church. Um, we have a lot of opportunity going forward, and we need everybody to participate um, with us as a church as we live into this message of belong, become, believe. So there's different ways to do that. You can send a check. You can give online. That information will be in the in the side comments on the Facebook. It's also on our website. You can find that information. Um, we're not gonna have a Zoom hangout today after the service. Uh, we're loving those. As a matter of fact, as we go into the new year, we're gonna be utilizing Zoom some more to, to build more community with that. But this week, because of the holidays, we're not gonna have the Zoom hangout after the service today. So pray, pray with me, if you would, as we get started this morning. Just take a deep breath. And let it out. God, thank you for your sustaining grace. How you have carried us through the incredible disruption and challenges. the grief, the confusion of this past year. You have got us here. And we're grateful. 
God, show us what this means that you have delivered us. And give us a vision for the future. I pray as we study your text today that you would, that you would align our vision with yours. That you would give us eyes to see, ears to hear, minds to wisely discern, hearts to love and obey. That we would know we are known by you. And in return, we would seek to know you, to follow you, to love you with every fiber of our being. You're worth it. You are our only hope. We give you thanks and pray in the name of your son, Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Well, good morning, Grace Church, and uh, happy Sunday after Christmas. I'm hoping everybody had a great Christmas time and uh, it was safe and and everybody's healthy, uh, super important. Hey, um, let me tell you a quick story. Uh, I had the privilege one time of going to a, an amusement park um, in Ohio called Cedar Point. I don't know if any of you all have had a chance to visit Cedar Point, but it is uh, basically an amusement park and it's all roller coasters, nothing but roller coasters. And I, and I love roller coasters. That's my favorite, uh, favorite ride. Um, um, but uh, Cedar Point, uh, happens to be home to the tallest, fastest roller coaster in the world. And uh, I remember well, the first year I went, uh, I decided I was going to ride this roller coaster. And uh, as I was standing in line waiting to get on the roller coaster, I looked up and the highest point uh, that you went to before it made its first drop was so high that I actually was nervous. I didn't even really want to go. I thought, you know, I'm an old guy. I don't need to get on this roller coaster to prove anything to anybody. Um, fortunately, I overcame my fear and uh, went ahead and rode the roller coaster and, uh, and it was a blast. I, I think I rode it twice that day, it was good. Well, I went back a, a couple of years later and lo and behold, they had replaced the world's tallest, fastest roller coaster with one that was taller and even faster. And of course, yours truly, had to go ride it, so I did, and it was a blast as well. So why do I, why do I tell you this story? Um, I probably uh, because the conversation that we're gonna get, be getting into this morning is what are we anticipating, right? Uh, is, is what we think we see and experience right now as good as we think it's going to get? Um, or do we think it's going to be better? So as you, as you join me in worship this morning, um, we're gonna sing a couple of songs. The first one's, I'll heal the power of Jesus' name. It was written in 17, uh, I think 1779 by uh, Edward uh, Perrineau. And uh, it's a great worship song. It's often been called the hymn of Christendom or the anthem of Christendom. And so uh, let's sing that together this morning.
we head into the new year, um, we're going to be studying Isaiah, and um, there are several uh, really well-written, um, anointed uh, songs that uh, use Isaiah as a basis for um, for the lyrics. And so uh, I want to do one this morning with you guys. We've done it before at Grace. It's by an artist named Todd Agnew, uh, and it's actually Isaiah 6. So, um, you know, after we sing it today, maybe you'll open up your uh, Bibles and uh, to Isaiah 6 and actually read the whole um, like the whole, the whole vision that the author is having and sharing with us. Um, it really ties in well with the, the scripture, I think, that we're going to be going through today in Revelation. Thank 
Hey, thanks, Alex. Man, I really love both those songs. Well, welcome back, everybody. If you're listening on the podcast, um, my name is John Ray. I'm part of the teaching team here at Grace Church of Northwest Arkansas. We're really glad that you're with us this morning, whether you're here in Northwest Arkansas or Nia Bay or Portland or wherever. We're glad you're here with us. And welcome to the last message of 2020. We have made it to the end of the year hoping for better things to come in 2021. Well, it seemed like we'd been in the saddle for hours climbing the dusty track of the mountain roads in Colorado. The views were breathtaking, or maybe it was just the extreme altitude working on our lungs, but whatever the cause, we were truly breathless without breath as we were up on these roads. Riding the Alpine Loop on mountain bikes is not for those who want an easy day trip. It was an extreme trip. It was a difficult trip, but it was a glorious trip. But with each bend in the road, our brain would try to convince our legs and our lungs and our heart to give just a little more effort. And surely we would make it to the summit and start our descent. But any of you who have hiked or biked like this know that oftentimes, as soon as you come to one place where you think you're surely at the top, you turn and then you see yet another road ascending even higher. And these false summits come along. Well, in some ways they're good. They, they give us something to aim for, something to go towards. If, if we get, all we could see was the ultimate summit, so far in the distance, we might not even try. But these false summits can also discourage us. They can lead us to let down, to settle, to quit. Look, any athlete, experienced hiker, you know how to play these mental games. You know how to, to encourage yourself just to make it to the next one, and then you'll give yourself rest. But knowing that as soon as you get there, you're going to start over with that. That's not bad. That's not a bad strategy. But when those fail, and we come to that place where we thought we could let down, where we could quit, and we just see an endless series of more summits, it's tempting to quit. It's tempting to give up. I know many of us have felt that way this past year. How much more can we take? How much more can we endure? Can't we just stop here? So I have this question this morning that I'm asking. I'm asking myself and I'm asking all of you who are listening. What is it that's keeping you going as a follower of Jesus? What, if, what is it that's keeping us going? What keeps us pushing through the pain towards the ultimate summit? Or maybe we're not. Maybe we've given up. Maybe we've just settled in on this false summit and said we've had enough. We're not going any further. Well, I would propose to you that what keeps us going is the vision and the promise of what we have been giving, given and what is to come that should be guiding us. But I, I want to emphasize that it starts in what we have already received. This may be one of the most countercultural, counterintuitive ways of approaching life that there is. It's surely what distinguishes Christianity from most other religion or philosophy, which are all about how to earn, how to make it, how to, how to pay back what's been given. Uh, Christianity is rooted in this idea that we already have everything that we need. It's already been given to us. Before we made any effort towards it, it came to us. Christianity is about this this gift, this grace that is given. And so it's not the, the promise of reward or the, 
the threat of punishment that motivates the follower of Jesus. It is the acceptance of the invitation to live into what has been provided for us and the promise of what that will enable, what that will produce as we accept it. You see, we can order our lives, set our resolutions, in an attempt to fix what is broken, attain things through our own efforts and resources, even address the disorder wrong we see all around us. We can, we can focus on the problem and, and make our efforts about fixing it, or, or, or. We can organize our efforts out of a deep sense of what we have already received and what is already being done what has already been given and what is already promised and then seek to work within that for its realization. Well, how do we guide this? So I want to look at a text. It's not normally thought of as an Advent or Christmas text, but I really think it is. Revelation 21, last second, right towards the end of the Bible, we get this chapter of Revelation, which we studied a few summers back. But I want to I want to look at this one section of verses, starting in verse one, chapter twenty one of Revelation. It says then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and earth had ceased to exist, and the sea existed no more. Now that's not the destruction of the planet, because listen to what it says next. And then I saw a holy city, the New Jerusalem, descending from heaven, out of heaven from God made ready like a bride adorned for her husband. So the passing away of the old earth is not the destruction of the planet. It's a reordering of it. It's a renewing of it. It's still the same planet, same place. And I heard a voice from the throne saying, look, the residence of God is among human beings. He will live among them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eye and death will not exist anymore. Or mourning, or crying or pain, for the former things have ceased to exist. Um, this is the second advent. And look how similar it is to the proclamation of the first advent that we've celebrated all this month. God with us, God's kingdom here established with us. But also note the difference of it. You see, the first establishes as true what had been promised, but it also pointed us to a, with renewed hope, faith, and vision in what is to come. The second one says, yes, it will come and it will be done. So we're still moving towards that, even though it's been established, even though what had what was promised and pointed to in the and the prophets um, was, was in, incarnated and made flesh in Jesus. It still points towards the ultimate fulfillment of that establishing of God with us and us with God and God's kingdom being fully realized here on the earth. You know, I think I've spent most of my life in ways swinging back and forth between extremes trying somehow to be worthy of or to pay back all the privilege that I've been given in my life. And I swing between that or just, you know what, just giving up. Just who cares? Why try? I'll never be good enough. I also go through se seasons of justifying all my excess, swinging between that extreme or just settling for what is with that. All of this is rooted in a failed imagination. Indeed, most of our lives, our situations, the things that we face represent a fantastic failure of our imagination. Our thoughts are constantly corrupted by advertising, the preposterous posturing of people offering man-made stopgap measures and short-sighted solution to situation that can only be adequately addressed 
by God in the inbreaking of the kingdom of God. God have mercy on us all. So what are we to do? Where, do, where are we to go in 2021? This new year offered to us in mercy and grace. This new year that many of us thought would never come. It's here. Where are we to go? How are we to approach it? Well, as we wrestled with this in the teaching team, Alex made the comment, you know, to start with, you have to care about this stuff. You truly have to care. In, in a world that tries to numb us, we have to constantly cultivate concern and compassion. And we have to be careful, though, because the world, as soon as it starts to do that, then it will try to take those things and then take them off track into the area of fear and panic. So we have to be careful how we cultivate that care and concern with that. We have to learn to see with different eyes, hear with different ears, think with different minds, and love from different hearts. As Tim Holland mentioned in the meeting, he said, we, we have to have a totally new perspective, a truly complete perspective. This is what it means to press on through the fall summits. This is what it means to press on. Yes, we, we, we do. We stop. We take a breath. We get a, we get a view of the vista. We take our coordinates, but we always press on. Laura mentioned how in her studies that it's evident that each time God is incarnated or encountered in the Bible, the people there, we think that like, this is the best. It couldn't get any better. Surely this must be the place we are supposed to be. And yet, as we read the Bible as a whole narrative, we see that time and time again, God is leading his people a little higher, a little higher, a little higher. So we can't stop. We can't stop and say, it's done. It's finished. It has indeed been done for us, but we have this responsive responsibility to push through to all that has been provided, not to stop short. There is still much to come, friends. So much more to come. So what are we waiting for? What more do we need to start acting, living, believing, caring as we should? This starts with cultivating an active gospel imagination, something that we talk a lot about at Grace Church. It's, that's this renewing of our imagination, our fixing of our eyes on Jesus, our setting our intentions on the kingdom of God. We have to have this active gospel imagination rooted in both advents. Both advents must form us. The first we are celebrating now. The second is to guide us as we enter into another year full of opportunity to reflect more deeply the image of God who created, saved, and sustained us. This God who is our past, our present and our future, the God from whom all peace, joy, and love is found. At Grace Church, we believe the promise of the universal reign of Jesus and the coming of the kingdom of God invites us to throw open the doors of the church, to welcome in everyone through this practice of radical hospitality and inclusion, we ourselves are transformed more and more into who we are created to be. Our confessions and our doctrine, our principles and our practices all flow from this invitation and these promises. We believe that the nature and character of God is most clearly seen and encountered in God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. He is our Lord. We are His people. In the march of history, this march that is sometimes so dreary and hopeless and exhausting, full of false summits, we are the ones who are marching towards Jesus. Look, we've all hit false summits in the past, probably more than our fair share this past year. 
But now is not the time to stop. Now is not the time to settle. Surely now is not the time to turn back. Friends, look, I know this sounds crazy, but I may be as excited about this next year as I've ever been because of what we have come through. What has been done in us is, is being done through us. What is being done among us? I don't believe it's going to be wasted. I don't believe 2020 is going to be this, this thing that we, we just throw out and we say, ah, oh, that never happened. Let's go back to the way it was. No, I, I believe the redemption, the redemptive power of God is going to enable that, is going to use that to propel us forward as we've never been before. But we have to have the imagination for it. We have to have our minds fixed, fixed on Jesus. We have to clear the clutter of the fear mongering, the conspiracy theories, the, <clears throat> the advertising that seeks to just get us to settle or to numb or distract. We have to keep moving forward. Like I said earlier, we're going to get a lot of a lot of opportunities for that in the next year in our in our studies and our going and our in our ministry and our welcoming and our hospitality and our shalom and our practices. I want to ask you to set your intentions to be part of that, be part of it in every way, showing up, giving sacrificially, praying diligently, offering hospitality rooting yourself in the shalom of the kingdom. Organize, orient your lives around this. And part of that orienting is what we do right now, what we do when we are together by the taking of communion. Jesus didn't leave us without means to this end. One of those means, one of those means of grace is when we together, even though we may be physically separated together, we share in this supper, this table that God has set for us. When we take the bread, we remember that he said this was his body, which was broken for us. So we take, when we break bread. Likewise, we lift the cup, recognizing that this represents his blood spilled for us that there is now no more barrier to our welcome. And there never will be. We are welcomed. We are included. We take this time to give our offering. We take this time to demonstrate that none of us here is without a need and none of us here is without something to give. So we share sacrificially, intentionally with each other. And we reflect. We take time to say yes to what the Holy Spirit has spoken to us this morning and set our intentions to act on that. So in all these things now, friends, take, eat and drink, grace and peace.
joy that flows from my glorious King, and in my heart, oh, I can see your loving arms coming down to me. By your blood that washed over me, by your grace that came down to touch me, my heart and my soul, oh, your glory made me, made me beautiful. By your blood that washed over me, by your grace came down to touch me, you have cleansed my heart and my soul. Healing arms, giver of rains, filler of souls, anointed one, bring healing arms, the giver of grace, filler of souls, anointed one, bring healing on us, your giver of grace, the fill. Thanks for being with us this morning. Just a last reminder of the announcements. Uh, we're not having the Zoom hangout after uh, service this week. Um, next week, Marlena Graves is going to be speaking. It's going to be a fantastic time together. Look forward to that. Also, we're going to be doing a Discovering Grace class coming up in the new year. I, I forgot to mention that at the start. Uh, so if you're interested in that. And listen, you don't have to be part of North, based here in Northwest Arkansas. If you feel like you want to be part of what we're doing here at Grace Church, um, let us know. We're, we're putting together this time to, to really go into depth is what it means to be part of Grace Church. Thank you for being here this morning. Receive this benediction now. Grace Church, squarely look to the Lord your God. God will give light to your eyes and will overcome every enemy, every obstacle, even death. Trust in God's unfailing love. Let your heart rejoice in God's salvation. Sing the Lord's praises, for God has been good to us. In the name of the Creator, Messiah, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace, y'all. Silent tonight, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. Run. Ten.
Thank you.